Would the last person leaving Dayton please turn the lights out? You've heard that expression for a long time, and Dayton has lost more than 120,000 residents since 1960. So we're going to shed some light on how and why this is happening and what to do about it. Hint, it's taxes and leadership. Dayton residents have been happily voting for tax increases on people who live outside the city but work in the city, thinking, why not? That's why we now have empty office buildings and a whole bunch of new ones in places where they don't charge any income tax. Well, at least not if you work in buildings with two floors. This is Austin Landing. It's in a township that can't even levy an income tax. Looks really booming, doesn't it? If you are a retail worker at Kohl's, Kroger, or any of the shops or restaurants, three cities have figured out how to tax you 2%. But if you are a white-collar worker who used to work in Dayton and work in a building with two stories, you pay nothing. Sounds un-American, doesn't it? Only the little people pay taxes. So our police forces are cut, our streets aren't getting paved, cleaned, plowed, or maintained the way they used to. And soon, things aren't looking so rosy. What's funny is, while our police forces have gotten smaller, all those rich businesses that don't pay taxes, they've all decided to hire their own private police forces that aren't accountable to anyone, no matter what Sheriff Plummer says. UD, Sinclair, Wright State, Miami Valley, Good Sam, Grandview, and even Metro Parks all have their own police forces. Because while rich people don't pay taxes, they also don't want to have their stuff messed with. Your stuff is fair game. So if you live in Dayton, you may remember getting hit with a tax that you didn't agree to right after Nam Whaley won her very expensive campaign for mayor. They decided to hit us all with a streetlight tax. Last I checked, streetlights are what we already pay taxes for. But no, instead of paying for streetlights or police officers, our city commission has tried to play real estate developer. Over $4 million at Wayne in Wyoming for an empty lot where they told us they were going to get a new Kroger. Last I checked, Kroger can do this on their own with their own money. Didn't we learn from our last experiment helping Kroger? That store sure looks nice now, doesn't it? Then there's the string of half a million dollar building purchases, all for buildings where there is no public use. 601 East 3rd, 500 Wayne Avenue. They later sold it for $10 and tossed in Garden Station, where volunteers had cleared away a hobo hotel to make a beautiful community garden. Then the old Third National Bank building. And last but not least, the hole in the ground they already spent a million dollars making. Gee, thanks. Now the city thinks it's a good idea to raise taxes another quarter percent. Already failing at government? They now think they should step into preschool education instead of leaving education to the school board. No, your street won't get plowed, but your neighbor's grandson will get preschool. But you can't get to work because the street is covered in snow and ice? Do we really need little burg and townships and more police chiefs and school boards? The answer is no. We need regional cooperation and a simple system for collecting and allocating taxes. No one should have to check all the different municipal courts in Montgomery County or pay for all the different websites. We need one system. And when it comes time to shining a light on all this, I've been doing it since 2005 on my blog, Ezrati.com. There you can learn about so many of these bad boondoggles and boneheaded moves, but let's just come back to one. Street lights. For the last year, I spent a lot of time driving out US 35 West to the VA. It always bothered me to see the debris on the roadway and the dead landscaping in the median strip, and that there were a whole bunch of light poles missing. This didn't happen other places. Light poles get knocked down, they go back up. But that's what's been happening in Dayton for the last 50 years. We are knocking things down, not building them up, except downtown. We've been busy putting lights on buildings, bridges, sides of roads, saying, look at me. I love it. The blue light special under 35 makes me happy, even if the real goal was to keep homeless people from hiding out there. And I started looking around. Why are the best lights only where the rich companies that don't pay taxes, while the rest of us get plain old white lights if we get them at all? Why aren't we working on getting lights on in the neighborhoods to make them feel warm and cozy and safe? Instead, some of the best empty lots on West 3rd Street are lit up like Christmas. So as they come to you in November, asking you to raise your taxes, think back about all the things that they've let go dark around you, and then look at downtown, and don't believe for a second that this commission is going to do anything amazing for you. Nope, it's the same old one, same old trick. Let there be light. It's always a good way to start.
Daytonians are being asked to vote for issue 9 to raise the income tax. And while I've shown you a lot of things where income tax could have been spent or was misspent, what we haven't talked about is what we could do with that income tax if we did raise income tax that they're not even talking about. Neighbors for all Daytonians, the organization that spent a lot of money on these signs and has spent money on mailings trying to get you to vote for issue 9, saying it's for the kids. So where that $4.5 million for Learn to Earn goes is to private businesses, to subsidize preschools that aren't as good as our free Dayton public preschools. Instead of giving the money over to the school board, who is charged with education, we're going to give it to mom and pops, homeschoolers, charter schools, your tax dollars supporting private businesses with no oversight. Oh yeah, and 20% of that money is going to go to overhead. There's no reason to do this. If Mayor Whaley and her friends who are pushing for this tax increase wanted to make a true impact on educational attainment in the city of Dayton, they could look at all the 15,000 students who will have one-to-one -one computers next year from the Dayton Public Schools who can use the computers at school, but they, when they get home, they don't have internet access. We have a digital divide in this community. If we invested that money instead in universal Wi-Fi everywhere for everyone, that would have a much greater impact on the educational attainment of our students. Before we give carte blanche money over to Learn to Earn, and Nan and her friends, to buy more buildings, to help more of her friends, to keep their payroll, we should look at things that are for all of us, and Wi-Fi would fit that. Thank you for watching this video and taking the time to educate yourself. It's in your hands now. Share it. Talk to your friends. Give them something to think about because this is a lot of money for a long time going to places that we have no control over. Thank you.